Alan, uh, do you think the scintillating remark, the judge's sarcasm, is reversible error? Oh, no, not alone. I mean, if the judge continues to make remarks that denigrate one side or the other, then a court conceivably might look at that as a totality of the circumstances. But, you know, judges make cynical remarks all the time. He apologized. No harm, no foul. Garbage in, garbage out. Chris, is it a strong enough defense to pretty impressive numbers? Well, no, I don't think there's any uh, real defense to these uh, numbers. Uh, I think it's clear. It has been in the past, and it continues to remain clear, I think, that uh, it's Simpson's blood at the crime scene. It's Simpson's blood leading away from the bodies. It's Simpson's blood and two other blood types in that Bronco, and uh, two of the sources of those uh, blood types in the Bronco are, are now deceased. Alan, uh, that blood is not the blood from her reference sample, says well, the scientist. How do you defend very, against that? That's, I'm not here to defend anything. That is very significant if it turns out to be true. I think somebody's going to have to explain the presence of EDTA on the blood found uh, on the socks, EDTA that comes from the reference tube, but not from the human body. I know Chris is going to say that the FBI expert said there wasn't enough EDTA and maybe it came from somewhere else. But, uh, and I suspect the defense, I don't know, have any information on this, will put on its own expert to uh, uh, counteract this surprising uh, bit of evidence that uh, the level of degradation was greater in the human body, directly from the human body, than in the tube, it's then in the sock itself. That sounds counterintuitive. I'm not going to call it mumbo jumbo the way the judge described some other evidence, but it does sound suspicious, and I bet there's another side to that. Story. Well, you know, and, and, you know, the, the uh, defense in the criminal case, nor were they in this case, I imagine, ever establish or prove that uh, the, the blood stains on those socks came from. Uh, uh, anyone's uh, reference sample, Geraldo. The fact of the matter is, is that this blood is not planted. It was not planted. Uh, it is blood that O.J. Simpson tracked into his home or, and got onto his socks as he, as he uh, murdered Ron and Nicole. Well, you don't know that. I mean, you don't know that any more oh, than I, absolutely, I, know. I absolutely do know I mean, that. know that. I do That's know that. This you are so be more biased. scintillating you even so than what happened in that you courtroom. So, you are, take so, out first you are so caught up in, in waiting that. Shall return. Nah. Don't miss a moment. But as we went to commercial, uh, Chris Darden of Southwestern University, uh, the author of In Contempt, and Alan Dershowitz of Harvard University, the author of Reasonable Doubt, were going at it. Chris was saying that the defense never... Well, Chris, you pick it up. Well, the defense never, ever established or proved that, uh, uh, that any of this evidence was planted. And they never have and they never will. Let me tell you something. Not only is the quality of DNA... Uh, 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 in the sock, different from the quality of DNA in Nicole's reference sample, but the quality of DNA in the Bundy blood drops and the quality of the DNA in the Bronco samples are oft, also different from any reference sample. Then you sample. really, then you really messed it up at trial. And why didn't you introduce that evidence? Why is are, all this these evidence are issues, coming out these at are the second issues trial? That were discussed it sounds at like trial you're and admitted at trial. These are issues and information that so, was discussed so at trial. Every and single that media trial. report back, that says every check. single media report that says this is new information information is wrong, Chris, and you're right. Chris, you are, you are fooling the listening public here. You screwed up at the trial. Did you you read, didn't have the facts did you read, in front of did you. Did you read Hank Goldberg's book, uh, Professor Dershowitz? I'm talking about the transcript. Did you read Professor Let's, Dershowitz? You show me something in the transcript did you read the book, which shows Professor her Dershowitz? testifying. Go read. No, no, I'm reading the transcript. Go read. You show Go read. me something in the transcript which has this witness testifying that the blood in the sock was less degraded. You in screwed this particular up situation, at the trial. In this Face particular it. situation, you have the burden of proof, Professor Dershowitz. You disproved my allegation. If you well, think that you can't. You didn't lying. disprove any of the others. Chris, you're just lying and you're misleading the public. How dare you call me Chris, a liar? you have I, many you know, weeks on this show. I challenge you to bring the transcript next week and show us where in the transcript this witness testified the way she testified in this court. If you, you don't do it, Chris, hands, admit Alan you're Dershowitz. a liar, Chris. You've got blood on your hands, Alan Dershowitz, and you're a liar, and you're disingenuous, and so is the rest of your defense team. I okay, put a guys, challenge to guys, you, Chris. Let me ask you a question. Next Here's week, a question. you have to produce this transcript. Here is a question. A, a more my father. All right, men, Dershowitz. men. Dershowitz. This, is a, this is a different question. It, Chris, is it not likely, with the benefit of 2020 hindsight, that this that the mountain of evidence approach the first time around is apparently, uh, if pundits are any indication, and of course we are all flawed, uh, that this approach, if, if I was going to draw a metaphor, it's, it's more like an arrow pointing at the heart of the 
defendant rather than a mountain of evidence trying to bury him, that this arrow might have been a more effective approach? Geraldo, the plaintiff uh, attorneys in this case, they have more than just 20-20 hindsight uh, in their favor. We educated the jury. We educated the public about DNA. You don't need to educate juries with four days of, of, uh, of testimony on, on, the, uh, uh, on the subtleties of DNA uh, evidence and DNA analysis. Not anymore. Not after everyone in the country watched and heard and listened and read about uh, That's about DNA the stupidest analysis. thing I have ever heard any lawyer say, that you don't have to educate this jury because another jury heard about DNA. You think that this that I, jury, th you just said that this jury didn't have to be educated I don't because think another they do. jury. I think that most people Chris, in the public now Chris, understand we, uh, have some understanding of DNA well, analysis. Alan, you Alan. have to cop What's to at least that, that, that we, Alan? Are, we are better informed, generally speaking. I don't remember consciously, jurors. except maybe with Sheck and but the Innocence what Project. What would you know about juries uh, anyway? When's the last time you actually appeared DNA. in front of one? I have, uh, I have read more jury transcripts probably you than have any read lawyer jury, in America. That, you know, yeah, that's your I problem. Do the you just sit back in an office up in an Ivy Tower reading. Yeah, you I want do to come down from the tower to the real world and see how trials are actually conducted. Well, you're the one who has Before the experience you sit there of losing second him, guess Chris. and second guess, mm -hmm. or, which is all that you do. And it's Alan, would you address the question I asked to your colleague sure. Christopher just a minute ago? Uh, this arrow pointing. Of course, I think it's a much better way, and it's not that they learned from the great trial tactics of the first trial. The first trial is a classic of how not to try a case. It's going to be taught in law schools all over the country for generations, how not to try a murder case. And Chris Darden and his colleagues are going to be remembered as the lawyer who really messed up a case that possibly could have been won had it been done in a more refined way. So what do you way say? Are you saying that we blew it and a guilty way. man got off? Is I'm that telling, what you're saying, I'm saying Alan? Are you finally conceding that O.J. Simpson you is the man who killed these two a people? a strong case that professionally could have resulted are you willing to in admit a hung finally, jury Alan, or a conviction. Are you willing to admit finally Alan, that the evidence in this case is more than enough to, I, to establish O.J. Simpson I, as you, a murderer. You, talking you about reading, admit that you if you want to call read, people liars, I mean, you want to listen now, if you, you had want read, to call Chris, people liars, if you had read my willing, book, you'd see that months after the trial, I wrote in the book, of course there was more than enough evidence to convict if it was truthful evidence. You failed because of your lack of credibility to convince the jury your lack of credibility. Shall we take a credibility because poll? You put on, uh, shall we put up 2,800 numbers of Dershowitz and have a credibility poll? Sure, I'm happy to do it. You put on false witnesses. No credibility. You put on Van you will Adder sell and you your put soul on for a buck, Furman. and you will release hey, a double murder out into the public for a couple bucks of bucks. On this case, than anybody else did. So don't start talking right, about who's making All right, making guys, bucks. guys, guys. Let's bring it back home. Let's bring it back home. This evidence. Uh, well, here, let, let me take a different approach. Blazier, and, and you know, I think he's an underrated attorney. Frankly, he's I, a I think that, uh, lawyer, you know, he Bob may not have the most he may not have the most fiery courtroom style, mm -hmm. but. Uh, he is methodically uh, precise, and he can wax emotional for him. It's different than either of you guys, but uh, <laughs> he does have a, a bit of fire in his belly, and he is trying fire. mightily, it seems. He is striving mightily uh, to get this idea inculcated in this jury's head that it doesn't matter what the number is. It could be one in 20 zillion as long as the data is somehow flawed. For example, uh, this, this point that was made a lot of the last time around, where do you get these statistics? What is your, your base to extrapolate these, these uh, uh, numbers? And the, the point coming back that only two African Americans, di did that work the last time around? Is that going to work this time around with a jury that is, objectively speaking, a better educated jury? Alan. Well, uh, it's not a better educated jury in the sense of it, it's not educated by what happened at the first trial. They may know what the but letters say that when we are not educated about what happened at the first no, trial. Not, Most of them have opinions and views about the credibility of the witnesses, about Simpson's guilt they don't know or innocence or DNA. culpability. You Everyone in the country now knows about you know, Chris, the Simpson case, and most people have some me. understanding question, let me answer, of what the please. evidence was no. in that case. So, well, of course, they're better educated. First of all, you're not supposed to decide a case, a second case, on the basis of what you may have heard snippets of in the first case. Every case has to be tried independently. I do think that the evidence being presented this time around is being presented in a much more coherent manner, in a much wiser manner, less is more. But can garbage in, garbage out work given that? 
Of course it can, depending on what the defense puts on in its case. Now we have to wait and see. Let's remember that at the criminal trial, when the prosecution was putting on its case, it seemed very strong. It seemed like a mountain of evidence. It then turned out to be a mountain range of evidence, with some evidence that was better, some that was worse. And in the end, the prosecution messed it up terribly by putting on two witnesses, Van Adder and Furman. We haven't seen Furman in this case, and we saw very little of Van Adder to tell utterly incredible stories which the jury didn't believe. That tainted the rest of their evidence. If the plaintiffs are smart here, they won't do that. And you know, and if the jurors here are a little smarter than the last ones, they won't buy into this, this crock take and ball that you defense attorneys throw at them. We shall return. I've just been handed this bulletin. Christopher Darden and Alan Dershowitz have bought vacation property together in Florida. They, you know, they no, just, just kidding. Um, here is the evidence as the plaintiffs have so far presented it. They have a timeline slightly later than the prosecution in the criminal case. They have a cop or several cops who saw blood on the gate uh, well before the sample was taken those weeks later to, to uh, belie the allegation that it was planted. Uh, they've got an expert, one knife, one killer. They've got a witness, white Jeep-like vehicle fleeing the scene. They've got Nicole buying gloves like the ones found. They've got Simpson wearing gloves like the ones found. They've got Simpson wearing Bruno Mali's shoes. They've got the cuts on Simpson's hand being possibly fingernail gouges. They've got the blood drops at Bundy matching Simpson. They've got the fibers on the gloves and knit cap matching Simpson's Bronco carpet fibers. They've got fibers on both gloves and knit cap matching Ron's shirt. They've got Nicole and Ron's hairs on the Rockingham glove. They've got a possible Simpson hair on Ron's shirt. They've got Nicole's blood now on Simpson's sock, and the sock blood does not match Nicole's reference sample. It seems, Chris, that the plaintiffs are doing pretty well. I think the plaintiffs are doing a, a better than pretty well. Doing, I think they're doing a great job, a fabulous job. And just about every item of evidence that you just mentioned or just listed was introduced into the criminal case. But is it possible that in introducing, for example, the three DNA evidence, I opened the program, that was three weeks, those three. Today it was one day, day and a half. Well, you know, I think it's nice to keep things as tight as possible, and that certainly is something that we attempted to do uh, uh, in our case, quite frankly. We aren't the ones that kept people on for days and days and days. Surely Robin Cotton was on uh, three days, a little more than three days, educating the jury about DNA. But we're not the ones that, that dragged uh, this trial out into a nine-month uh, uh, circuit. Geraldo, I think you have an obligation to your okay, viewers. Okay, Alan, you're going to tell them that my trial. obligation right after yeah. this commercial break. Dershowitz, stay tuned. Alan was uh, about to tell us what one of my one of the duties incumbent on my on me is. Alan, it was. Well, is. with due respect, Geraldo, I really do think when you have somebody like Chris telling the public that what went on at the first trial is exactly what went on at this trial. You I should have a chart. That, you Get should have straight. a chart. Get just, just, straight. You know, keep your mouth Get shut and let straight. me finish. Don't fine. tell me when to Look, shut the up. The public will decide what they heard. That's not what I said. Hey, Haraldo, are you going to let me answer this question? Okay. Okay. Gentlemen, gentlemen, okay. gentlemen, okay. Chris, let's speak colleagues. Garden is Alan not telling first and then Chris responds. not telling the truth. And you should put up a chart. And in the chart, you should show what was presented at the civil trial, what was presented at the criminal trial, what's different. Then you should have somebody like Vince Bugliosi, who has more experience than anybody, come on the show and tell Chris and tell me and tell you how to compare what's going on at the criminal trial is what's going on at the civil trial so the public is not misled by being heard by, by being fed self-serving information by a guy who screwed up the first trial trying to explain that everything he did was right and the only difference is the dumb jury you know the last resort of an unsuccessful lawyer is to blame it on the jury and that's all Chris knows okay. how to do blame now, it on uh, the jury. Chris a brief rebuttal no rebuttal no rebuttal okay <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Okay. You. All right. Listen to the feel right, now, all right, I just now guys, I suspect you're going to be on the same better. side, so you, you better. Feel I'm not going to answer the kiss and make up, but I'm sure you'll be on the same side for most of this. No, we won't. Uh, listen to these figures. They were compiled by the Orlando Sentinel, a fine newspaper, uh, uh, Orlando, Florida. 1,000 traffic stops monitored on a Florida highway, captured on videotape. Black and Hispanic drivers make up only 5% of the drivers on this particular road. Those 5% accounted for more than 70 percent of all those drivers stopped and searched and that's not all the average stop for a driver of color took twice as long as the same procedure did for white drivers now